Hi, and welcome to Refresh Her. I'm Denise, and if you're new to my videos, I say hello to you, and if you've been watching for a while, I say thank you. I just want to share some simple thoughts every week we get together, just some things that might encourage you and help you as you desire to walk with God and just please Him. wonder how your new year has been going. Here we are. Um, when I'm recording this, it's almost a whole month into the new year, and I wonder if you've struggled with anything that has been um, your desire to be obedient to God, but yet you might be facing a little bit of conflict, some opposition, some hardship while you try to obey. Do you ever wonder why when we're being obedient to what we know God wants us to do, why do we face opposition? I mean, you'd think it would just be easy if God clearly made it um, known to us what we need to do and then we obey, but then we, we just face this like sometimes a brick wall. Why is that? Well, I find a lot of comfort in that when I look in the scriptures because I see that I'm not the only one who faces hard things when I'm trying to do what is right. For you, maybe it has been that God has led you to take a leadership role. Maybe you're leading a Bible study at your church or doing a small group or any kind of, of leadership. Or it could be that maybe you've embarked into a new ministry. Maybe you're seeking to share the gospel with a neighbor and you're doing a Bible study. Or maybe it's just that um, you have a new job. Maybe you've made a move. And with all of these things, you felt sure that you were obeying God's call. But now you're facing some opposition. Well, I'm reminded that in Scripture, in the book of Exodus, we read about Moses, the leader of the Israelites, taking them out of Egypt into the Promised Land. And here's Moses, God's servant, facing a lot of opposition and hardship. And we, he knew he was doing what God called him to do, but things were not going smoothly. And I think we can really learn some good lessons from Moses' life and from the children of Israel as we look and see why God allows hardship, even when we're doing what is right. First of all, I want us to see that even when we're doing what God calls us to do, things will not always be easy. But why? Why is that? Well, let's look at Exodus chapter 5 and verses 22 and 23. They say, And Moses returned to the Lord and said, Lord, wherefore hast thou this evil entreated the people? Why, what is it that thou hast not sent me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in thy name, he had done evil to his people. Neither hast thou delivered thy people at all. Moses is saying, God, things are harder and you still haven't delivered us. And I know I'm being obedient to you. See, the Pharaoh tells the Israelites that I think you have too much time on your hands. So we're just going to let you go get your own straw to make your own bricks and then you can do your work. Well, obviously, the people aren't going to be very happy with Moses and it was difficult so why does God allow hardship? Why doesn't he just make it easy for us to obey? Well, first of all, even as Moses, we find Moses talking to God. When you face hardship, don't you find yourself in prayer talking to the Lord? Now here we even find Moses being very honest with God. And, but that prayer, that time of pushing us to our knees is a good thing and it's a good reason that God allows opposition to come. It realize, makes us realize how dependent we are on God, that even Moses, um, though he had the call of God, he was not able to do this himself. So he was going to have to look to God to do some impossible things. And then it also teaches us humility, because if we could just do it, wouldn't we pre be pretty proud of ourselves that we accomplished that task? But Moses said, oh God, I need you. You're going to have to, to step in. So it makes us really dependent on the Lord. Secondly, is that we remember that 
God is in control of those that are in leadership. God was in control of Pharaoh. And the point I want to make here is that God will ultimately get the glory, no matter who is in leadership. And it's easy for us even to look around at the government officials that we may have and just see the, the depravity that is allowed into our country because of them. But God will ultimately get the glory. And God hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he could accomplish his purposes. In verse 5 of chapter 7, it says, And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch forth my hand upon Egypt and bring the children of Israel from among them. God was doing this so that he would get the glory. And the hardship that we face, even opposition from, from leaders or whomever, God is going to accomplish his purposes and he will get the glory for it. Thirdly, I want us to understand we face opposition when we obey, but we need to remember that God will keep his promises to us. In chapter 6 of verse 5, I love this. It says, And I have heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. God will never forsake or forget his promises to us. He will keep his promises. He didn't forget them to the children of Israel, and he will not forget them in our lives either. What are some of the promises that you cling to when you're facing difficulty and hardship when you want to obey? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Even though you're facing opposition, you remember that God is helping you to obey. What about Hebrews 13, 5? I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do unto me. We remember that Jesus said he gives us his peace, not like the world gives, but he gives his peace to us. And those peace uh, promises are anchors to our heart when the storms of and waves come about us. They are our anchor. So the fourth lesson that we can learn when we're facing opposition in obedience is that sometimes even those who are supposed to be on our team will turn against us. This is hard, isn't it? Chapter 6 and verse 9 says that the, tells us that the Israelites were very angry with Moses and Aaron. Now, it was not their fault, Moses and Aaron's fault, that the hardship was coming on the Israelites, but they thought they were good targets to take out their frustrations on. And so they were very angry. And we find in this story over and over again how they just come and just really are upset with their leaders the ones that were trying to help them. So during those times, we're reminded that we have to keep our eyes on Christ and that if we're looking for just the praise and the following of people, we will be disappointed. I'm reminded that everyone forsook Christ. When he got close to the cross, he was alone. Who am I to think that I'm going to have some kind of following by people that will always be loyal to me? But I have to keep my eyes on the Lord Jesus and remember that he will never disappoint me. Every leader has faced the time of betrayal. David talks in Psalm 55, starting in verse 12, about a time when he was betrayed by his friend. In verse 12, it says, For it was not an enemy that reproached me, then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me, that magnified himself against me, then I would have hid myself from him. David said, if it was an enemy, I could handle that. And if it was someone who hated me, I, I know where to hide. But it was thou, a man my equal, my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked in the house of God in com company. David said, this is a friend, someone who I've worshipped with. And those are the hard things to have to deal with when we feel like we're being obedient and that we're right before God. But that's what will happen oftentimes. But I love David's example because at the last part of this passage, he says, evening and morning and 
Noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. This made David run to the Lord three times a day at least. And when we're overwhelmed by those that would depart from us, we remember, oh Lord, I need you so much. And it makes us turn our eyes from men and put them on Christ. So we have to pray and give that back to the Lord. And though other people will forsake us, and they will, God never will. I will never leave thee, as I quoted a moment ago. Number five, when we face opposition, we need to remember that Satan will always have a counterfeit ready to deceive. John 8, 44, Jesus reminds us that Satan is a liar. He's the father of lies. There is no truth in him. And he cannot speak the truth because he can only speak lies. And when uh, the magicians that um, saw the works of Moses, they took their rods and threw them down and they became serpents. Well, this was a just a, a deception. Satan will always have a counterfeit ready to deceive. But we need to remember that the truth always wins out because the next point is remembering that God is greater than our enemy. As a matter of fact, in the story of Moses, Moses' rod swallowed up the other serpents, showing us and reminding us that God is greater. And we, we cannot be surprised that we face opposition because we know that we have an enemy who will oppose us, but God is stronger. Praise the Lord for that. What would we do without not that truth? And then I want us to see that God knows everything that his children are going to do even tomorrow. He also knows what our enemies are going to do. I love this in verse 15 of chapter 7. It says that he says to Moses, get thee unto Pharaoh in the morning. Lo, he goeth out into the water. God knew what he was going to be doing in the morning. And he said, Moses, you go out there and you be ready to meet him. God knows where you're going to be. He also knows where your opposition is. And he is controlling them. He sees it and he hears it. And we can trust him to accomplish his plan because he knows where we are. Lastly, I want us to understand that when we do what God wants us to do, that he will give us all the details we need. He will give us all the grace we need. He will give us all the provision we need when we're in the middle of that. In verse 15 of chapter 7, he told Moses to hold the rod over the water, but he specified that it wasn't just any rod. It was the rod that had become a serpent. I love that because God gives us the details of what we need to do. So, that makes us, again, it makes us dependent on him to stop and wait and listen in prayer for what he wants us to do next. Proverbs chapter 5 and verse 22 says that the fool will die without instruction and in the greatness of his folly, he will go astray. That's exactly what happened to the Pharaoh. And God will uh, guide and protect us just as he did Moses. And you know, lastly, I want us to remember that as we look at Moses' life, Moses was a shepherd of these people, and God was shepherding Moses. I love the um, down in Psalm 23, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. But you know what? We have to kind of look over our shoulder behind us to remember what are some of the mercies what are the goodnesses of God that I have seen him pouring out on my life all the days of my life? If you turn around and look behind you, you will see them. They will be there. And he will get us to the end and allow us to be able to accomplish whatever that thing is that he called us to do. He helped Moses. And even though there were trial after trial after trial, we look at Moses as, as a, a great leader for God and a man who was certainly dependent on God. I want to end with a quote by Amy Carmichael. She says, It is great to be faced with the impossible, for nothing is impossible if one is meant to do it. Wisdom will be given and strength. And when the Lord leads, he will always strengthen all along the way. Let us remember that we are not asked to understand 
but simply to obey. So whatever the opposition that you're facing while you're obeying, keep moving forward, even if it seems impossible, because nothing is impossible with God. I hope you'll stay on the path. Don't give up. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.